Well, good evening, everybody. It's David Brooke along with Michael James as the Michael and David show. You haven't seen us for a couple of weeks because we have decided to do our show once a month on the first Wednesday of the month. So welcome. And uh, welcome, Michael. How are you, sir? Doing great. How are you this evening, David? Doing good. We've got to certainly, we'll have to jam pack a lot of things in because we've got a month to catch up on of things that we've been doing. So uh, I think we'll just kick it off with, uh, give us the recap of uh, Mr. James for the last month or so. Yeah, well, I've been starting to uh, simplify the software that I've been working with, uh, with this company. And we've came to a process where we've got these two different logins now. And so I had this timeline you know, nine months to next year on my on my plate. And so we crushed that timeline by nine plus months. Mm. And so we now have this phenomenal software that'll be uh, very game changing. And so it's taken like a year plus to work on this and get it done. So I'm working on the licensing, the master service agreement and the scope of work for like what they're going to provide and so um once i get that then they're gonna i'm gonna pay for the licensing and then they're gonna do a paper and a video documentation and training so then i can go out and uh introduce this to a large, all the networks i've been talking to so wow. and what's the software it's basically the uh the software that would go between like say you use Salesforce or Zoho or some sort of a big CRM contact mm -hmm. management resource center. Mm -hmm. And it's where you would have all of your daily leads and contracts and clients and whatever you have going on. Um, basically we would be able to work with your Salesforce mm -hmm. and Salesforce and your bank. I've created the software that goes in the middle of those two. Mm. And so that way it creates the referral fee out to the refer. It pays the consultant and the growth partner. Nice. And then obviously the Naga network. So uh, we've created that and that, you know, I hadn't really been spouting that out and everybody had thought it would be nine months out. So that has changed in my last month. And uh, so now I'm kind of figuring out my timeline on when to go start presenting this thing. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent, cool. So you really compressed that into, you were planning on a nine month deliverable and you did it in a couple of months? Yeah, I've, I've been over a year on that one with that wow. team. So it's been a lot of weekends. I mean, I basically haven't done anything for a year plus. So it's been pretty heavy wow. on the computer. Wow. So my thought was put in the time, invest the time up front, get this thing done and get on the road and go start introducing it. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we shall see. Cool. Anything <laughs> so else that's, in the, uh, that's what's from the, the, uh, you were able to do along world. with that? What's that? Or anything else you were able to do along with that as far, as far as besides finishing the software, which I know is a huge undertaking. I'll keep it at that to keep it short, but that's okay. where I'm at with that piece. So Cool. Cool. Excellent. What about you? What has gone on in the last month? Well, similar, similarly, not as long as yours, um, certainly, but um, I got this book done that was nice. the six word book. Yeah. Six word lessons to embrace gratitude. 100 lessons to enhance your life by practicing gratitude every day by David George Brooke. There it is. I saw that on Amazon. And, and thank you so much for putting it on the website. I very much appreciate that. Looks professional as always. Of course, I would expect nothing less from M. James and Associates. But it's it's really uh, it, it's nice. It's a hundred. It's ten chapters with ten lessons in each chapter. So basically, a hundred lessons around gratitude, and they call it the six word lessons. It's down here because every chapter title and every lesson title is exactly six words. And this was something that uh, I think it was Ernest Hemingway or. I believe it was him came up with it was that people really like little snackable bite-sized chunks of information didn't want these big long things and then if you look at the actual chapter they're about a hundred words give or oh, take. Awesome. Wow. it kind of explains each thing um, add additional gratitude feelings during day 
you know, remember to include all important elements. So there's just different things. And that's around the gratitude journal. So the, the reason, again, not quite as lengthy as yours, but the reason it was such a challenge for me is that anytime you, you write a book, small, big, large, and wherever it is, there's always this aspect that was really new to me and having done several books now, and that is editing. The actual writing itself, just hammering your way, Word docs make it so easy and autocorrect and spell check and all these different kinds of things. But the editing is the one it would kept it kept coming back from the publisher and the publisher's editor. And it would just have red slashes all through it. And stuff, you know, it was just like a couple of times I just I don't know if this happened to you with the software, but a couple of times I just oh, never just <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and i thought forget it i don't even want to do this and i just push i'll just forget i'll just do another book later i've had it with this but i stuck with it and then you know when you do i think there's one thing in here about uh, the cord of wood theory you put away a cord of wood one piece at a time and don't worry about the enormity of it like eating an elephant one piece at a time but i just thought i put it away and then i did little chunks of it then come back and do chunks tomorrow and the next day and then it finally got done and i remember when it was finally approved and it was really neat and and to be really candid is the editor's choices nine times out of ten made sense they just sounded better looked better made more sense you know and that kind of thing so i, I just have come to really respect good editing and i think good writing is it's not easy, but I don't think it's as hard as editing. Editing, you have to really go back and did I say this before? And as I was saying to Michael, no, no, I said that before in the last chapter. So I want to say something different and stuff. So yeah. anyway, so that was a big project for me. And then in the meantime, has congratulations, been, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. It's got to be a huge weight off the shoulders now. Oh, definitely. No question. And just getting it done. And and, and I think okay, what, man. and one more quick thing on this, when I think mm -hmm. about is in the many years you and I have known each other and the things we each are doing or attempting to do, a lot of the books I've done have been little uh, little quotes, little sayings, uh, the gratitude journal, stories. There's one book that has 50 stories in it. But this is really the first book that kind of takes 100 pieces of what I talk about in my talk. So when somebody comes up to me afterwards, what should I buy? And I, I, I buy the, you can buy the gratitude journal, but if you really want to have my son, I wish he was here to see your talk, buy him this one. This will, this will tell him all the things I talked about in that 90 minutes. So okay. it's, it's feels, it's kind of neat. And I still want to do a more lengthy book, but it's just, it's really a good one to encapsulate all the points that I bring up in, in 90 minutes and stuff. So, so that was nice. And, um, and then really the other focus for me has been, uh, since I saw you last, I did a talk, uh, mm. in, Oh, let's see, where was I? Oh, in Silicon, uh, down, down, down by Tacoma. And then I've got several coming up. I think I mentioned that uh, they've now been booked for a while, but I'm starting to book a number of them out of town, which is really neat because nice. I've got a, yeah, I've got um, Houston, Texas coming up and yeah, Pensacola, yeah. Florida and Little Rock, Arkansas in San Diego. And right. I'm waiting to hear back this month uh, for a prison down in California, which would be interesting. Right. I've done Monroe before. So it's really, for me, it's always kind of been three-pronged. And I think any of our listeners, um, one of the things I think you and I have tried to really push is to have multiple pieces going at the same time, different revenue sources, different income streams, profit yeah. centers, whatever you want to call it. And so for me, the book is certainly one. The speaking is one. The coaching is one. And maybe the workshop. So that's kind of been where my focus has been. And it's been a uh, really busy month, yeah, but but very but very satisfying, especially getting the book done. That's awesome. And so, when did you get the book done exactly? Uh, it was about about a week ago. Yeah. Oh wow, that's I, quick. Then uh, it was. See, today's Wednesday the fifth. Yeah, I think it was yeah. about the twenty ninth or thirtieth of May, and, and then they send you the proof copy, and you go through and make sure there's nothing that needs to be checked and or needs to be corrected. And then I got it in. So now, and I think the other thing that I'm going to use it for too is it's a great. Uh, they they sell for twelve ninety five. But it's a great uh, business card, sort of an active business card. Instead of somebody, I was looking mm -hmm. today and I thought, in fact, this, this I'm, I'm going to actually put this down for another topic for maybe next month. But I was, I was looking at these are just business cards that I've kept in just the last, you know, I don't know maybe year. Mm -hmm. Here's another stack. And I'm not sure what to do with them. I have one of those things you can put them in the sleeves and you put all the, you flip them over in the notebook. But I mean, how many people ever follow through with a business card? I mean, no. some, I think it's kind of crazy. I think they've lost their whatever if they ever had it. It's a gold mine. I mean, yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's like LinkedIn. I mean, if people actually went through their LinkedIn list, they'd be millionaires. Exactly. Exactly right. In fact, you know, obviously they're not doing it because they're not millionaires. (laughs) Mr. James, I'm putting that down for your next subject month after next. Link, you can hold me to it, man. LinkedIn gold. I'm going to put it right there. Gold, and there'll be a dollar sign. Let's talk about it. business cards and LinkedIn, too. Yeah, That's and business topic. cards. That's a great point. got point. shoeboxes of them. <laughs> That's a great point. So, so that segues us nicely into this month's training. And so, Mr. James, would you talk about the influencer mode or model yeah. that we had talked about? Yeah, so... Uh, Last month, I we had talked about. I'm not sure exactly the topic, but the the push forward here is the influencer model on social media and how to monetize your network. Mm. So, the influencer model is over time you get to be known as this influencer, and you've built this audience on either Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, whatever your channels are you have a following and you're an influencer. To be an influencer, you have to have a certain sized audience. There's micro, there's macro, and there's super macro now. Mm. And so depending on, you know, if you're under 100,000, if you're under a million, and if you're over a million, that's basically your breakdown. Mm. Uh, YouTube has a breakdown, Facebook, all this. And so based on your kind of rank, so to speak, that's considered your level of influence. Oh, and so, so say, David, say um, Nike approaches you and say that Kaepernick uh, commercial, you know, the guy for San Francisco and, mm-hmm. you know, had the big, um, you know, uh, the rights thing. And so, you know, Nike paid him, you know, millions of dollars to do that ad. Mm-hmm. And what Nike could do is, ask you the gratitude guy how do we get the world to think about gratitude Mm. right Mm -hmm. and respect and love and personal gratitude right and gratitude for everything that you do and you walk on which is nike you're walking you're wearing your right so if nike came to you and said david how do you how would you influence this next campaign And you would sit down. That's that's basically influencing. Nice. Is when brands approach you and they say, hey, let's create a strategy and let's create a marketing campaign. Mm -hmm. Or you create your own influencing model and you're trying to sell a product. So take yourself, David. You do coaching and gratitude classes and then speaking engagements. Mm -hmm. How would you go out? and get more of these. Well, because of your daily, weekly, monthly YouTube content, and as well as your Facebook and your LinkedIn content, you're building this influencing model. So every time that you say, hey, David Brooks got a new book, you've built Mm -hmm. an influencer model to buy that. Mm -hmm. Because the rest of the year, David Brook or the Brooker, that gratitude guy, is pushing valuable content. Here's snippets of my upcoming book. Here's a speaking engagement I just did. Here's this thing I just wrote. Here's a class that I just taught. Right? This is the engagement in the influencer model. When you do a call to action, like, hey, I just created a new book, a new program, you have the influence to have people buy. Mm-hmm. That is the power and influencing model of social media. That's my education for this week. Excellent. And I think that's certainly something that's a goal. You mentioned Kaepernick and things like that. That's a goal for you, for both you and me to be in an influencer model situation where they are coming to Michael James about this or coming to David Brooke for the gratitude or Michael for the social media or the, the how you, they get in touch with people or, or the software or whatever it might be that now we're yep. going to use Mr. James as our, our spokesperson or as our model or as whatever it might be. So mm-hmm. excellent. Excellent. That's good. That's good. Well, I would say for me, I was glancing over just the last couple of um, times we got together and I, I had talked about uh, communicating uh, with the tribe and writing a book and then the work environment are a couple of the subjects that I, 
I uh, had mentioned or touched on in the past. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to talk about, and I may have mentioned this in communicating with the tribe, but I think it's certainly worth a second um, time or second mention, and that is the platform that you use. And I happen to be a big fan of Constant Contact. There's also MailChimp. There's also some other ones that have multiple resources within the same platform. But I think that uh, once you pick out the one that's best, and as I say, Constant Contact or MailChimp are two that are, I think are really excellent for communicating with your with your people as you build your email list, build your following. But I think one of the things, and I know I got a lot of this from you too, Michael, is this idea of content is king, which we know, and pushing content out in the form of a video, a blog, an article, uh, a chapter from a book, a book, whatever it might be, is great. But there's another C word that is, I think, almost equally important, and that's consistency. And in the case of my example, Every single Monday morning at 4.15 in the um, a.m., my video goes out. And you can count on it. And it's interesting. You don't really realize, and I speaking of influencers, you don't really realize sometimes how much people are um, uh, counting on you when once in a while something happened. I, it didn't load properly. Not very often. Or I just It's only been a few times that I haven't sent out a, a video. And oh my gosh, my inbox is, what happened to the video? Where was it? I've been looking for it. You don't understand. I start my Monday morning with your video. And it's just, it's like, wow, you forget sometimes. And again, that kind of a nice segue back to the influencer. You, you just don't realize how many people you're influencing sometimes until that person does send that email or you don't get a communication. So it's, yep. it's pretty crazy and stuff. So, so that think, consistency stops. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think the content is certainly important. Uh, another thing too, that just happens to be my particular situation is I had originally started with about three minute videos, roughly, then they were two minutes and now they're one minute. And I did that on purpose because uh, MMM, Monday morning minute is what I call it, the video. Every time I went from three and a half to three to two to one, the viewership went up about 50%. And it was amazing. And I, and I think that, again, something that's important, get to your point, make your point, make it succinctly, maybe get an opening comment, talk about what you're going to talk about, and then wrap it up with your ending comment or however you want to do your content in that minute or whatever. But you notice that people, if somebody sends you a video or somebody sends me a video, the very first thing I do is look to the right-hand corner to see how long it is. You know, and, and if it's 23.08, I don't have that much time. I love you, Michael, but you know what? I don't have 23 minutes. Now, if it's 1.49 seconds and, you know, less than two minutes, okay, good, I'm going to watch this. And so, so having that, getting it really in a, a succinct amount of time and making your point uh, is really, really important. And then still you get, in, in the case of feedback, I mentioned the editing on the book, which is a form of feedback, certainly. But I still get a lot of video uh, comments that go, could you smile more? <laughs> I just go, the gratitude's a happy subject. Why are you so serious? And I go, okay. So now I'm going to put a little sign up in front of my my video camera. Smile so I can see it. Smile, big guy. Yeah, keep track of it. So anyway, so. so You're living the life, man. Yeah. And, and I think in a sense, another thing, and I put um, as an example, maybe time after next because we got I got networking of the market marketing of the network for you next time but I put in LinkedIn uh, gold mining the gold uh, business cards but I think also is the That's elements so I'm gonna write this down maybe for me month after next the elements of your business and by that I mean how many different ways do you uh, express yourself My, uh, Monday morning video constant contact, website, social media posts, Facebook, all the things that you know about and so forth. So I think that's a good one to have. Here's kind of the top five or the top 10 that you should have if you want to be somebody who's, who is viable. Mm -hmm. So, okay, good. So uh, speaking of next time, what will be, what will you be bringing up next time for the group? We might wrap up a little bit early today, Louis. So we got about five minutes. Um, I was thinking about the uh, the network um, aspect where you're actually 
taking the social media aspect, the the influence, and then you're taking it back into like personal networking groups, mm. Meet, meetup events, LinkedIn events, uh, different marketing events, bu- small business events, chamber of commerce, economic alliances, all sorts of these local groups, even like a ton of the stuff you're speaking at, like, mm-hmm. you know, for people to get back out there and to leverage the the real network again and i know i spoke about that earlier but now it's it's coming full circle into that i believe yeah excellent excellent okay great well and for me next time it's going to be magnetic marketing and i will it's just nice to get do the research and then pass it on to the group but here is the the two notebooks magnetic marketing i'm going to tomorrow system and there's two very large notebooks, uh, Glazier Kennedy Insider Circle, GKIC, is the people doing the boot camp. So I will report back on that at the next time. I'm going to be there tomorrow and Friday. So uh, I have a feeling that's going to be – I have a lot of people I know that speak very highly of that. And actually, I know several people that will be going there tomorrow. So mm-hmm. I think that should be really good. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's what I'll be doing next time. So uh, And then speaking of next time, our next time will be uh, July 3rd. 2019, which will be the first Wednesday of July. And uh, so we'll look forward to seeing everybody next time and uh, with a lot of new content and more things to talk about. So any final words for the group, Mr. James? Yeah, you know, something I've realized in a lot of the last, you know, few weeks or meetings is, you know, if I show up at 101% instead of 99%, percent hmm it makes such a difference in the meeting or my work environment or the person that you get your coffee from in the morning or the banker that you work with. If you show up at that 1% extra, it just, it it lights a spark in people's days Mm -hmm. and people see you as more confident. People ask you if they can help you with things. People almost like bend over backwards for you. It's really interesting. I've been showing up like this in a lot of ways. And then I've been showing up at the 99% to see what the difference is. Mm. Wow. I mean, wow. it's like you have a dead slug versus you have Mike Tyson in the ring and they're ready to go. Interesting. Interesting. I, I do it every day with bankers, insurance companies, dentists, salespeople. Um, you name it. But if you get them to show up that 101%, mm-hmm. they're, they're a lightning rod. But if yeah. they're not as stoked, if they're 1% under, they, just, yeah. they question things, there's fear, there's doubt, there's not the confidence, and they don't go out and do it. It's really interesting. Yeah, very That's good. That's something I've been noticing and playing with energetically. Excellent. Excellent. Well, good, good thought for the – for the viewers. And I would say that kind of ties into that for me, my final thought for everybody is just to you hear the word passion a lot, but I tell people that in my talks and workshops about really getting a good connection with yourself. And if it's good, great. If not tweak it and make it even better and really like, and get to know and, and appreciate that person in the mirror. And then secondly, find something you're passionate about. And I think that'll lead to your purpose. And I think as people continue to struggle sometimes and have a tough time out there, if we kind of go back to what our purpose is and um, kind of think, what do you want to do before you leave this earth? It really helps to get you refocused a little bit. So yeah, showing up at 101% as well as having a purpose makes sense to me. So anyway, well, thank you, Michael. And thank you all to the viewers. You You betcha. And we will talk to you all next month, July 3rd. And uh, everybody have a good month in the meantime. Take care. Cheers.